You're listening to a message from Victory Fort Bonifacio. Get the latest updates by visiting victoryfort.org or like us on facebook.com slash victoryfort. The Lord gave me this, uh, this uh, message today. How can we be strengthened? Because in this world that we're living in, yes, we're so hyped up. January, rally, rally, Tuesday and all. And kapag uwi mo sa bahay, with all the daily grind ng buhay natin, talaga nakaka-exhaust, diba? nakakapagod. In fact, every time puwi ako ng bahay, ingit na ingit ako dito sa isang pamilya na to dahil sila yung pilakas masarap ang buhay sa pamilya namin. And ito po yun, yung mga pusa namin. Ang sap ng buhay ng mga yan, kakahilata lang yan, bibigyan mo ng cat food, yun yung dalawang baby niya, wala pa kami pangalan eh. Isip kami, Kimi, Dora eh, pero wala pa kami maisip. Pero tila mo, pati laruan nila, may mga staff to yan. So shell yung mga yan, sa Mark Spencer pa namin, binibili ng mga toys yan. And hindi sila stress. Parang pag uwi ako, sabi ko, pag galing ang trabaho, traffic and all. And then yung magulang din kasi nila, hindi rin stress. Ito yung mami nila. Pagka na stress, nagpapas pa yan. Yan si Marie, yan. Si Marie, yung mom nila. Sarap ng buhay niyan. Minsan tatawag pa yan. Tatawag yan ng masahista. Meron niyang ano. Para sarap ng buhay ng pusa na to. Alam niyo yung daddy niya, si Sushi, yung dad ng mga pusa na yan. Sarap sound trip lang yan pagka na stress. And <laughs> ako yung amo... Ako naman, hindi naman ako ganun na-stress. Dalawang beses lang ako na-stress in, in a day. Okay? There are only two times I feel stress, day and night. Okay? So, <laughs> I don't know. But if you're like me, na yes, hype ka and all, but with all the busyness of life, with all the, 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 the thesis na kailangan mong gawin, with all the uh, sa, sa kota na kailangan mong emit, medyo nakaka-drain, Right? And then, nadat na mo yung misis mo. Pag-uwi mo, sasabihin mo, ano ulaw, galit pa yung misis mo. Mamili ka, di ba? Pagbukas mo, tuyo. Mamili ka kung kakain ka o hindi. Parang ganun na sasabihin sa'yo. Parang nakaka-stress. Kaya kailangan natin ng mga stress ball. Pero meron akong isang ibebenta sa inyo. Available lang to online sa www.jep.eliscopides.com Is to yung tinatawag na stress reduction kit. Parang sticker siya. Ang, ang illustration, uh, instruction niya, ang place on a firm surface Lalagay mo lang siya sa matigas na matigas na surface. And then sabi dito, follow direction in circle, repeat step two as necessary. Okay, ito yung ano, bang head here. Okay, talagang pag-stress ka, untog mo untog yung ulo mo. Hanggat, sabi, if unconscious, okay, cease stress reduction activity. I mean, it's just so draining. It's just so stressful. I don't know. But if you're here today, parang lagi kang fired up, lagi kang, you're on the move, you're on the go, parang 24-7. Alam mo yan, naka-Starbucks ka na 24-7, naka-mata mo and all. Well, this is not for you. Pero baka mayroong kaibigan ka na kailangan to, na alam mo ngayon, relationally, is, the, is exhausted. Financially, physically, talagang hirap na hirap. That's why we're gonna look at the book of Isaiah today. Because the book of Isaiah is so, how would I say this? This is so important kasi yung chapter 1 to 39 niya, it focuses on God's judgment, okay? And He's on His people. Pero itong pag-uusapan natin, which is chapter 40, this is a start of, there's a note of comfort and redemption. Kung baga, yung chapter 1 to 39, God, God, Isaiah was telling the word from God na, this is because of what you've done, ito yung judgment ko. But come to, come, come to verse 40, chapter 40, I mean, dumating na yung redemption and comfort, it's a book of consolation. But for those of you, again, for those of you na hindi pa nakakabili ng Bible, na hindi pa po nakaka, pagbukas ng kanila mga Biblia, I'm gonna tell you a story muna para mabigyan natin ng proper background to. Yes, you know, may, alam niyo naman yung influence ko, Kids Church, kaya medyo kids ang dating natin. So, noong unang panahon, may isang kingdom, yung tinatawag nating Israel, pero they split up into two. One is the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. Ito pong northern kingdom, which is Israel, was run by the Assyrian in 721 BC. Wow, dumating mga Assyrian. Kaya lang yung mga Assyrian, natalo yan ng mga Babylonia, which is more powerful. Ito mga Babylonia, they conquer the, 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 this uh, uh, southern kingdom, which is Judea, in Judah, in 587 BC. So, like, kind of like 100 plus different. Kaya, yung pong used to be Israel, the glory days of David was now gone. They are exiled. They are now in Babylon. They are now, what do you call this? They are, they are now in captivity. So, kind of like they used to be the most powerful nation on earth. Ngayon sila, mga nakatanika, they are in chains. At kinuha po sila dun sa Babylon to be exiled. Yung mga mahihirap, iniwan dun sa desolate land of Israel. Are you following? So, this is the time when everything was really hopeless. Parang wala talagang nakikitang hope yung mga tao. They're so emotionally, physically, financially, they're, they're really discharged, they're drained. 
I don't know. Some of you here can relate to this. In fact, makikita mo sa prayer nila. Look at the prayers of these Israelites when nagpray sila sa Isaiah chapter 40, verse 27. My way is hidden from my Lord. Parang, parang nakikita ka ni Lord yung ginagawa ko. My cause is disregarded by my God. And then ito na yung nangyari. The blame game begins. Na-experience na ba yun? You want to do it yourself, pero pagka nagkaroon na ng problema, biniblame mo na si God. And then they, they started blaming God. Do you not know? Hindi ba alam, God, yung sitwasyon namin? Have you not heard? Lord, na mismo ba itong nangyayari sa amin? I don't know, maybe you're suffering from severe illness today. Lord, ba't nangyayari sa akin to? Lord, ba't yung baby ko nangyayari to? Bata pa naman yung baby ko. Ah, oh, oh, ah. Lord, hindi ba nakikita na children are reward from you? How come may severe sickness itong anak ko ngayon? Or maybe, I don't know, relational dysfunction. Lord, mula na naborn na gin ako yung mister ko, bakit ganun pa nangyayari? I don't know, maybe you're a student here, and once you're attending small group, once you attended church, once you started honoring your parents, ngayon naman nakalukuloko yung mga barkada mo, and they started to, to leave you, and you think, Lord, hindi mo ba nakikita to? They are so emotionally and physically discharged. But three, three verses down the road, God gave them a wonderful promise. Here's a bunch of people na may problema, and God gave them this wonderful picture kung ano yung mangyayari sa kanila. That's why puro will yan. They will soar. You will soar on wings like eagles. Ha! Huh? Nakatani ka lang kami. We're in chains. We're in bondage. We're in captivity. We can't do what we want to do. And you're telling us we will soar. Hello? Parang ganun ang dating. Okay? Hindi nila sinabi yung haller. Ako lang yon. Baka hanapin niyo haller sa book niyo. Okay? And then another promise. You will run and you'll not grow weary. Wow, that's an impossible thing to do. You will fly. You will run. And you will walk and not be faint. They're almost fainted na. Pagod na pagod na sila. These three metaphors are a picture of impossibility. Can you really soar like wings on eagle? Can you run and not grow weary? I, I mean, some of you, you're running this, this thing called marriage. You're running your life in marriage and you're really you're about to give up. Some of you, you're in the verge of giving up to your children. Sobrang rebellious. <sighs> Pastor, hindi ko na alam gagawin ko. In fact, when we counsel women, when we counsel housewives, when we counsel wives, they always say, Pastor, I have nothing more to give. Ginawa ko na lahat sa asawa ko na yan. And you're telling me we can soar, we can run, we can walk. So here's the picture. Your present situation, you can relate to this, and the promise from the Bible, parang in between, okay? Yun ang problema natin. Are you listening? Your present circumstances ngayon, Maybe you're a student here. You know very well. Yes, Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, blah, 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 blah. Pero you're out of school you today. Hindi ka mapag-aral na magulang mo. Because of poverty. So, paano yon, Pastor, hindi ko makita yung connection eh. I'm here. Hindi ako makapag-aral. Sinasabi mo, I have a great future. I have a great promise from God. Can you relate to this? Maybe you've been molested as a child. And you knew fully well that God has a destiny for you, but hindi ka maka move on. Somehow, from your present situation to the promise in the Bible, to the promise of God, somehow it will not make sense. Pastor, ang layo. Dito po nagkakatalo, that in-betweens. Are you listening? You're a businessman. You started building this business. Alam mo, kay God to, nagtatithe ka, nag-offering ka, and all. And then all of a sudden, now you're nearing bankruptcy. Hi, Jeff, hindi ko maintindihan. I started this business, and now it's going to go bankrupt. And you're telling me that the Lord will bless the works of your hand. You'll never be the, he- the, the tail. You'll always be the head. Are you listening? What I'm saying is your present situation, hindi connect doon sa future promise that you're holding on to, to God. Now, iba naman madiskarte, okay? I'm sure hindi kayo to. Alam niyo yung principle, they're living to this principle, the end will justify the means. <laughs> Kahit na ano yung in-between, pastor, basta... Ang ending niyan, mabibless ako at all cost. Are you listening? Anak, sabi sa Bible, you're gonna be blessed. So wag mo na alamin kung sa ako kinuha yung perang pampaaral mo. <laughs> Honey, mag-abroad ka, wag ka magalala. Pero hindi ako uwi ng dalawang araw. Ano gagawin mo? Wag ka na magtanong. Basta makakapag-abroad ka. I, I, I don't know. It's just we always justify the end regardless kung ano yung naging means para makatim. But that's not the way God operates. So here's the picture again. Let me just give you a bit background before pag-usapan natin to. Ito yung problema. There's this group of Israelites in bondage, in captivity in Babylon. Ito yung complaint nila. Hindi mo ba alam, God? Hindi mo man lang ba kami naririnig? And then God gave them this wonderful promise. You're gonna soar, you're gonna run, you're gonna walk. Now in between, that's what we're gonna talk about today. 
what's the secret? What's the, what's the, the secret na binigay ni God that in this in-between, ano yung dapat natin gawin? Because some of you can relate now. Yes, Pastor, you're right. My presence here comes and says, yung kinalalagyan ko ngayon, with the way with, I relate to my spouse, with the way I'm raising up my kids, with the way yung bank account ko, with the way isang katuta kong utang, hindi mangyayari sinasabi sa Bible na mangyayari sa akin. Maybe the in-between tayo nagkakaproblema. And the in-between that pag-uusapan natin ngayon is this. Here's the secret that I'm gonna reveal to you. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. And the following text is, is this. They will soar on wings like eagle. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Let's bow down our heads and let's just pray. Father, we thank you for these thousands of years, Lord God, the story. And still, the principle is true. Lord, help us, Lord, to grasp, Lord, this principle, Lord, na maipamuhay namin, Lord God, that by waiting, that by choosing you, that by choosing life and waiting and being renewed, we'll be able to soar. We'll be able to run. We'll be able to walk and not be faint. Holy Spirit, please open our hearts, our minds, and our soul. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You see, sino may gusto ng promise na yun, That you're gonna soar like e- wings on eagle. I mean, you're gonna soar above any circumstances. You're gonna run this marriage as if hindi ka talaga napapagod. You're gonna walk and not be faint. Kung mapapasin mo, walang stopping, move, walang stopping stage dyan. They're always on the move. In a different arena ng buhay mo, you may be soaring, you may be walking. I don't know kung nasan stage siya ngayon. But the point is, you're not gonna stop. You're just gonna keep on moving. Tila natin ngayon yung sikreto. Now, I'm gonna reveal this to you in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. Open po natin yung Bible natin at open natin yung mga hinirim natin Biblia sa labas. Dahil hindi pa tayo nakakabili. Iba, let's click on our Bible. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. But they, everybody say they. Say in sa, 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 sa na maybe sa text niyo sa NIB but those but it's the same okay but they will wait for the Lord let's talk about this word but they ibig sabihin but they means it's a choice that there are those who did not choose to obey there are those who did not choose to wait are you listening so so si God po ina-address niya lang dito but they but those who choose to wait you know what? God did not make us robots. Hindi po tayo robots. Napasin nyo ba? Tinimik ka tabi mo. Pastor, makapal na mukha. Mukha robot to. Hindi robot yan. Tao pa rin yan, okay? God did not make us, make us robot, and we have this what we call free will. Okay? And, and it's always a matter of choice. Ang problema, madalas natin sinisisi si Satan, di ba? Eh? Si Satan made me do it. Eh. No, 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 no. It's your choice. In fact, when Moses... Nung binigyan ni God si Moses ng, ng list of curses and blessing, and then Moses presented it to the Israelites. Remember when, when they, when they uh, nung nag, uh, ex, nag-exit sila sa, sa Egypt, sinabi ni Moses dun sa mga Israelites, today I have given you the choice. Between what? Between life and death. Between blessings and curses. Para siya sabi ni Moses, now it's up to you. I have given you these choices. You choose life or you choose death. You choose blessing over curses. But those who choose to obey God. Now let me tell you something. Madali sana eh. Madali namang i-choose yung life, yung blessing. But here's the thing. In this world that we're living in where everything is instant, hindi ka tayo makapagintay. So it's a matter of choice. But they would choose golf over dinner with kids. Hello. But they would choose to max out their credit card pag midnight sale. Are you listening? But they would choose to pursue wealth over integrity. But they would choose not to forgive instead of forgiving. It's a matter of choice. It's you choosing life or death. It's you choosing. It's, it's a matter of choice. When Joshua was about to die, remember si Joshua, after Moses, si Joshua po pumalit, and he was about to die, He's seen the faithfulness of God. He's seen kung gaano kabait si God sa kanya. And look at those last words ni Moses bago siya mamatay. He was challenging the people. Millions of Israelites. Sabi niya, but if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves. This day, whom you will serve. Kasi po si God, ayaw niya ng lukewarm Christian. Actually, there's no such thing as lukewarm Christian. It's either you're alive in God or you're dead to sin. Hindi pwede yung you're, you're alive in sin and then pag nandito ka, alive, alive ka rin kay Christ. No, 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 it can't be. 
Sabi sa Bible, he inispit niya yung mga lukewarm. It's either you're hot or you're cold. That's it lang. And then Joshua was challenging the people, kung hindi desirable sa yung i-worship tong si God, well, you better choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. But, sabi niya, but as for me, ako, and my household, we will serve the Lord. It's a matter of choice. And not just a matter of choice, it's a personal choice. I, I, I cannot have faith for you. I can just teach you. I can just impart what I know from the Bible. But at the end of the day, it's your choice to forgive your loved ones. It's your choice to unconditionally love your spouse. It's your choice to unconditionally love your children in spite of their hard-headedness. It's always a matter of choice. Are you listening? So, here's your present situation. In fact, let me tell you something. Let me just give you what all you already know. Itong present situation mo is a product of your choices, right? Pinili mo mag-iPhone 5. Mm-mm kahit maganda pa yung iPhone 4 mo. Kasi lahat sila naka-iPhone 5 na. So, hinuhulugan mo pa lang yung iPhone 4 mo, binenta mo ng patapon sa Green Hills para hulugan mo ulit ng dalawang taon tong iPhone 5 mo. Are you listening? And now, monthly, binabawasan ka and you're in a big problem today. Hindi mo na-enjoy yung sikosana na mo na bag, okay? Gusto mo mag-upgrade dito sa bago nilang modelo, whatever. And now, because of your discontentment, you choose to max out your credit card, and you're in this problem today. It's a matter of choice. But they, let's move on, but they who wait, everybody say wait. I don't know, ako lang yata to, no? Kayo ba, ayaw niyo naghihintay? Naghihintay ka ng dental checkup. Let's just be honest. Pag naghihintay ako ng dental checkup, or magabayad ka ng bill, or some of you use LRT station, di ba? Ang nakaka-bad trip maghintay, di ba? Nalaro mo na lahat ng angry birds mo. Di ba? Naghihintay ako minsan sa doctor's check-up noon ako. Nalaro ko na lahat, ha? Wala nang stage. Eh, may katabi ko, naglalaro. Sabi ko, ganito yan. Tinuro ko pa siya maglaro. Nalaro ko na rin yung mga games ng katabi ko. Kapalit naman tayo. And, and there's something about waiting. One night, si Mandel Pin, sobrang nag-wait siya, delayed flight, bad trip siya. Sabi ano pa yun? Kakapat na oras na ako dito sa airport na. Nilapitan niya, guest relations officer, sa susunod na flight, i-book mo na ako, ah. sobrang na akong delay. At gawin mo akong first class. Sabi nung guest relations officer, sir, sorry, but you have to go back to your line. Wala pong VIP treatment dito. Sabi niya, hindi mo ako kilala? May idea ka ba kung sino ako? Ang ginawa nung babae, kinuha yung mic. Kung sino man po nakakakilala sa isang lalaki na to, <laughs> Naka-pink na shirt, pumunta lang po sa gate 3 ng Terminal 2. <laughs> di ba pag naghihintay ka, lumalab- lumalabas yung angas mo, yung mga ganyan, di ba? Pag naghihintay ka sa guard, sa lagard ng subdivision, di ba parang hinihinga ng ID lahat ng taxi, tapos ikaw parang feeling mo talaga sa yung subdivision. There's something about waiting. We hate waiting. But this wait is different. When God says, but they will wait on me, it's not a passive waiting. In fact, it carries with it the idea ng Hebrew word na yon, it's to look eagerly for. It's waiting na excited ka. It's not just passively waiting. Alam ka pa, naghihintay ka ng, ng LRT, naghihintay ka, bas, passive yung time. I mean, it's just, the time is just passing. But this one, to look eagerly for, to hope or to expect. Alam niyo yung tura ng waiter? Di ba yung waiter? Pag kumakain ka sa, kasi, uh, hindi naman sa nag-aibang ako, kinakainan ko lang kasi mga five-star talaga na restaurant. Yung mga waiter, like mga chick boy, ganyan. Kitang-kita mo yung mga waiter, ano? Mga inasal, yung mga extra rice. Okay? Iba, nakarelate, to. Oh. Ang tunay na lalaki, nag extra rice. Okay? Okay, good. Sa ang tunay na lalaki, nag reply sa text. Oh, ano kayo? But here's the thing. Pag yung waiter, akala mo lang passive siya na naghihintay. Pero bang pansin mo lang na sa mga five-star restaurant, sobra yan. Pagka kumakain ka, tinaas mo lang yung mata mo, Sir, ano ho yun? Nakaganun agad yan. Sabi ko, wala naman po ang kailangan. Minsan nga, nag-aayos lang ako ng buhok. Yes, sir, anything? Nababasa nila ngayong utak mo eh. Parang gumanong ka lang, sir. sir naka, naka ano agad yung kutsara. Tinito. Alam nila kung ano kailangan mo. They're waiting, but they're not passively waiting. They're always on a lookout. They're looking for someone na kailangan ng tulungan. That's a picture of waiting. It's not a passive waiting. They're expectantly waiting. In this world that we're living in, masyado kasi instant. Yun ang problema natin, mga kapatid. Instant coffee. Saka ba? Coffee ko o Nescafe? Ako doon sa yummy. <laughs> ang quit kasi ni Coco. <laughs> Juan de la Cruz. <laughs> okay. Hoy, hindi akong po-promote. May taga-GMA dito. 
Yung kumanta taga GMA yon. Anyway, wag niyo lang ano. But here's the thing. In this world that we're living in where everything is instant, you want instant. Instant coffee. Nagulat nga ako may instant sopas. I mean, parang just add water. And one time, ito, this is a true story. Kahapon, tawa ng tawa yung wife ko, nakrimento ko to. One time kasi, nagkaroon ako ng craving for carbonara. Sabi ko, Han, sa mga kabiling carbonara. Kaya sa so, problema, papasok na ako ng gate. Binuksan na nung maid namin yung gate. Yung gate kasi namin, from our main house, mga 18 minutes sa travel pa yun, ano, sa laki ng lawn namin. So, nag-uusap kami, ha? Gusto ang carbonara, ganyan, ganyan. Malayo pa talaga, ha? Talagang yung mga sirbadora lang, binibilagbox ng ganyan, red carpet and all. Pagdating ko, meron na, Meron na siyang carbonara. Meron pa lang ngayon na laki. May na, just add water. Pero ang sarap din, ha? Ma, ma, para maalat-alat lang. But... In this world that we're living in, there's so many things na pwede mo makuha instantly. That's why it's hard for us to wait. As if God may ginagawa ka ba talaga? But you see, when the word, when, the, when this Bible says, but those who wait, it means it's a participle that means continual action. It means you just keep on waiting with confident expectation. Have you seen a farmer? Yung farmer ba, pag nagtanim, pagbalik niya, oh, lalaki na, gulat ako ha. Ganun ba'y farmer? Meron bang farmer na ganun? Nagtanim siya, natulog. Wow, harvest. May ganun bang farmer? No, 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 no. A farmer knew very well na yung butil na yon, kahit walang, walang uh, activity sa ibabaw, he knew very well that something beneath that soil may nangyayari. That's starting to grow. And, and you know that he's expectant. Why? Kasi nagtanim siya and he prepared yung warehouse niya, yung barns niya, iniprepare niya for the harvest. And that's a picture of waiting, that you're expectantly waiting for a harvest. Let me tell you something. If you're sick today and you've been praying, believe me, God is steering your heart. God is starting to steer your heart to build that faith. If you're, be- if you're believing God na yung spouse mo bumait, yung spouse mo bumalik, yung spouse mo magkabalikan kayo, believe me, God is steering something in His heart and in your heart. Kaya lang hindi tayo makapagintay. Pastor, pambihira tong araw ko ng pinag-train, hindi pa rin bumait. Malamang. Kasi ang bait mo rin. Okay? Baka si Lord gusto kang pabaitin para makita ng mister mo, totoo yung ina-attenda mo na yan. Are you listening? Pray ka lang pray sa mister mo, hindi naman nakikita sa'yo. Before you knew it, God is steering your heart. God is changing you para makita. That's what the Bible says. An unbelieving husband na born again because of the wife really honoring God in their marriage. Are you listening? So if you're believing God for something, your present situation today, gusto mo agad na instant. Pastor, sige, okay na ako. buy na ako sa'yo dyan. Pero bukas ba yung utang kong 300,000? Wala na? Hey, wag ko sa'yo. Magagalit mga taga Metro Bank sa'yo kung gano'ng mangyayari sa'yo. Hindi ito instant. There's a moment of waiting. Now, healing is on the way. Provision is on the way. But the problem is, are you focusing on the healing more than on knowing and embracing the healer himself? Because ultimately, God wants you healed. That's given. Hello, see, God, gusto kang healed. But in the process, let me tell you something. In between, are you holding on to the healer more than the healing itself? Because believe me, lahat ng pinagaling ni Lord, ni Jesus sa Bible, namatay din lahat. Are you listening? Yung lumpo, yung bulag, yung binuhay niya, si Lazarus, namatay din lahat yon. Because it's never about the healing. It's about this in-between, that in-between you get to know this healer more. That you're in this situation today, financially, you're in trouble, kahit hindi ka kumain, kahit hindi, basta, Lord, alam ko, kung hindi ko man marating itong promise mo, but in the process, kasama kita, okay na ako. It doesn't matter how long you get there. It doesn't matter what's waiting on the other side. Sabi nga ni Miley Cyrus, it's the climb. <laughs> it's the climb. Di ba alam niyo kanta na yun? Mga jologs kasi kaya hindi nyo kilala. Mga ages lang kayo, ulan, okay. So it's not, the mat- it's not a matter of what wa- what's waiting there. It's always the climb. You knew very well that God is with you. Proverbs 29, 20, Do you see a man speaking haste? This man wanting immediate, immediate, instant, instant. There's more hope for a fool than for him. Are you listening? Mas may pag-asa pa si Raulo kaysa sa'yo. That you acted in haste. You jumped into that contract without even thinking. Without even asking for counsel. The Bible says, there's victory in the counsel of many. You jump into a contract, kahit alam mo medyo shady. Ah, tatights naman ako. Hindi naman mukhaan mo. Mabait naman yung mga tao na yan. Kilala ko yan. No, 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 no. 
What does your Bible say about that deal? Are you listening? We're pushing our own agenda. At pagdating na nagkaloko-loko na si God, Lord, di ka ba nakikinig? Ha, ah, nakikinig ako. Pero pinush mo yung sarili mong agenda. We always acted in haste. The reason why you're in this present situation today because of acting in haste. The reason why you're in that marriage because you choose to act in haste. Kaya ka na mo blemang isang marriage mo. Financially, physically. You're acting in haste. Like double job ka, every opportunity ginras mo because you acted in haste. The reason why you're suffering your relationship with your children, with your wife, because you acted in haste. And you try to fool yourself. Hindi, para sa inyo to. Kaya kailangan ko mag-abroad, kaya kailangan mag-trabaho, kaya kailangan kong 24 hours nasa office. No, 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 no. Can I just be honest to you? Sa mga men dito, can I just be honest and straightforward to you? There are only two distinct roles na meron tayong mga lalaki. And that's being a father and a husband. The rest of your role it's replaceable. You're an executive here. Believe me, the moment nag-resign ka, bukas may executive ng kapalit ka. You're a congressman. Believe me, n- namamatay ka pa ng hating gabi, meron na nanunong pa napapalit sa'yo. You're listening. Are you listening? Because in every role that you're into, you are replaceable. Somebody will do it much better than you. But there are only two distinct roles na hindi ka pwedeng palitan. And that's being the father to your children and being a husband to your wife. Are you listening? So don't ever pursue wealth, pursue gain and worldly gain in the altar of your children, in the altar of success, in, 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 in replacement of your children, relationship with your children and your, with your wife. It's sad. Maraming mga lalaki, they try to be the best CEO, they try to be the best guy in the world, pero failure sa mga anak at sa asawa. John Piper says, to wait on God means to pause. Everybody say pause. To pause and soberly consider. It's, it's, it's an acknowledgement. It's humility before God that our own inadequacy and the Lord's all sufficiency. That's, what a, that's a picture of what waiting on God means. It's not a passive waiting. Hindi ito yung sipo sabi mo, okay, bless ako ni Lord. Okay, nandito ako ngayon. Ibe-bless ako ni Lord, tutulog na lang ako. Bibili akong lazy boy. Sige, ibe-bless naman pala ako. No, 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 no. Ah, okay, the Bible says, uh, the, the righteous man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. Okay, hanggang apo ko, sagot na ni Lord. I'll be righteous here, upo-upo lang ako. No, 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 that's not a picture of waiting. Waiting on God means you have to pause and consider our own inadequacy, our own incapability, our own shortcomings, and the Lord's all-sufficiency. And the folly of waiting for God is that we forfeit. Ito ang problema nyo, pagka nauna ka kay Lord. We forfeit the blessing of having God work for us. Alam nyo yung tagline ni Pinoy? Kayo ang boss ko. Well, see, God is the same. I want to work for you. I want to heal you. I want to bless you. I want to be the center of your marriage. But first, you have to lean not on your own understanding. And let me just do it. But they will wait in the Lord shall renew their strength. So, nakikits yun na yung in-between, right? It's a choice. Early morning, will I choose death or life? Will I choose to read the Word of God or read my text? Okay? Will I choose to read the, 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 the Word of God or yung blog? It's always a choice. And then you, you encounter this office mate, should I forgive her or not? It's always a matter of choice. And now, when you're in the choice, and now you're waiting. Hindi mo pinapangunahan si Lord. Because alam mo na, kaya ka nandito sa problema na to because of your uh, hastiness. Now gusto mo, Lord, I'm just gonna wait. But here's the thing. Lahat ng nandito sa waiting period, mahirap mga kapatid. I wish I can just tell you, you just wait on God and everything will just be easy. No, it's not gonna be easy. Believe me, when you walk out the door, I always say this, paglabas mo sa pintuan na yan, balik ka na naman sa utang mo. May utang ka pa rin. Balik ka na naman sa relationship mo, sa asawa mo. Uuwian mo na naman yung rebellious na anak mo. May sakit ka pa rin paglabas mo dyan sa pintuan na yan. That's why you have to have a newfound strength. The Bible says, but they, the choice, We'll wait for the Lord will renew, shall renew. Hindi po yung picture na parang dead bat. Ano yung dead bat, di ba? Sasaksak mo lang and then lalakas ka ulit. But that battery is meant to be drained again, right? Hindi po yun yung word na renew. In fact, the word renew here, look at this picture. The word renew means, it's a, malalim tong Hebrew, okay? Oh, hindi yung chalaf, okay? Yung chalaf, hindi. It means, it's, 
The Hebrew word means kaulaf, okay? Hindi naman tayo ma-Hebrew, ma-Hebrew, okay? I'm just telling you this, okay? Just to give you a deeper study no sinabing I will renew, hindi yun yung nasa mindset natin na i recharge mo lang, no? Kaulaf means to substitute or to change for better. It means now your newfound strength, God will give you a new strength. It's not gonna be anymore about your strength because it's always limited. Because you're always prone to sin. Because you're always prone to, 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 to fail. That's why God is gonna give you the Holy Spirit that will empower you. But there's waiting na kailangan. Alam niyo mga, new, mga, mga bago panganak na eagle, yung eaglet, they have to be renewed. They have to stay in the nest. And while waiting, they're strengthening, they're being fed. Nagpapalakas po sila, kailangan nandun ka sa nest while waiting. Walang eaglet na pagkalabas, okay, lumipad ka na. No, 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 they have to stay in the nest to be fed, to be nurtured, to be taken care of the mother. So some of you, nas, kailangan nyo nasa nesting period kayo ngayon. And now you do that passively? No. Keep reading the Word of God. Keep, 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 keep doing what the Bible says. Keep loving the Word of God. If you're a young student here, start reading the Word of God and loving it. Hindi ka tawad na iba, tinutulugan ng Bibles. Ah, baka pumasok sa utak ko to pag nasa ulo ko. No, 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 no. While waiting, you're doing something. While waiting and just reading the Word of God, you're praying. Sino rito yung, let's just be honest, ah, hindi ko na tataas yung kamay nyo. Sino rito yung, you're gonna start your day without praying, sakay ka na FX, pasok ka na, and then pag nasa problema ka na, nasa gitna ka ng araw, tanghali, hapo, may kamiting ka, saka bigla ka magpe-pray. Nando ka sa cubicle mo, Panginoong Diyos na mapagmahal. Ang tindi mo magdasal, eh, no? Pag nando ka sa, talaga may, may bulilyaso ka sa office, ang tindi mo, la, close na close kay ni Jesus. But you see, you start the day, kahit wala pang problema, Lord, I know I cannot do this day without you. I cannot go on to this day without you. Apart from you, I cannot do this, Lord God. So be with me in the name of Jesus. Amen. Just simple as that. Because pag hindi ka nagpray, it's as if you're telling God, God, diyan ka muna sa gilid, I can go on this, this day without you. Pag, uh, pagka na problema ko, tatawagin kita. Parang ATM, kind of like a ATM God. But no, 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 no. Kung nasa gyera ka, nasa ka pa nag-aaral, mag, mag, magkasa ng baril, at pumutok, nako po. Private Benjamin na labas mo. No. Before the battle, you should prepare. Every time I see these young kids starting to do small group, nasa ilalim ng hagda natin sa basement. Wala kasi lugar dito pag Sunday, but they, it won't stop them. That's why we're putting up the next building. That's why we're pushing you to go to the, to, to, to the Get Connected Corner. That's why those taxi drivers are doing that. Why? Because while waiting for the blessing, I like what Mang Mateo said, ang hindi sa'yo, wag mong kunin. That's what the Bible says. He had a choice, na ibulsa or hindi. But he had a choice. And now he's waiting. And while waiting, he's just strengthening himself, reading the Word of God, joining small group, volunteering. Anybody here, sabi mo, hindi, may edad na ako, hindi na ako magbo-volunteer. Nakita niyo ba ito? Mga kala niya, pagod na yan? Hindi. Naghihintay lang niya mag-duty. Mga kids church teacher niyan. Mga 60 pataas na yan, mga may mga discount na yan, biruin mo mga discount card yan, pero they're serving the Lord. Because you have, you don't have to stop. I don't care for 80 or 90, God, there's something more for you. With your wealth of experience, with the wealth of how God has been good to you, with your wealth of testimony, you have so much to share to the next generation. They're volunteering. Why? Is it because wala na sila magawa? No! Because they knew fully well. They can soar on wings. They can walk. They can run. I can do anything for Christ to strengthen me. There was a time when David, pabalik sila sa, hindi pa siya king dito, and they were, they have, they're, they're gonna go back to Ziklag, their place. And yung mga Almalekites, kinuha yung mga asawa at anak nila David, 300, I think, more than 300 of them. When David and his men came to Ziklag, they found it destroyed by fire, and their wives and sons and daughters taken captive. So David and his men wept, Allowed, okay? Kung nandito ka sa present situation mo, I'm not saying talikuran mo yung realidad. I'm not saying deny the, 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 the reality. No. David wept until he had no strength left to weep. Pero ba rito, iniyakan mo na talaga yung problema mo? Okay lang umiyak. But my hope and prayer, hindi ka, you will not wallow in defeat. My hope and prayer is that you will not settle in mediocrity. Ito na ako, habang buhay na ako dito. No, 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 no. But David is a man cut above the rest. Look at David. After niya umiyak na umiyak, wala na siya, wala na siya maiyak. Parang Johnson, no more tears. But David found strength. 
in the Lord is God. He did not wallow in defeat. He did not wallow in, oh, wala na tayo, asawa talaga. Ba't ka nito, Lord? Hindi niya sinisisi God. But he found strength in the Lord is God. Ang una niyang ginawa, he worshiped God. He called the high priest and then worshiped God. The Lord, his God, again, that's the thing, it's a personal encounter with God. Now, let's go back to our diagram. Here's where most of you now, you're complaining to God, Lord, di ka ba nakikinig? Lord, di ba nakikita cancer ko? Lord, di, Lord, di ba nakikita puro, me, 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 me. Lord, di ba nakikita situation ko? And Lord is saying you, telling to you, anak, kaya kitang paliparin like ikaw. You will run and not grow weary. You will walk and not faint. But here's the thing, anak, you have to really choose me. Choose life. Choose the blessing more than the curses. But in the, in the price of choosing, you have to wait. And while waiting, don't worry, anak, I'll give you the strength. It's not about your strength. It's me working on your behalf. The ability to say no to ungodliness is so hard. But with God in us, the Holy Spirit in us, did you know that Abraham waited 20 years for Isaac to come? Alam niyo ba yan? Alam mo ba si David? David was, was anointed king. He had to wait 20 years before the actual realization that he became king. Now, David was anointed here, but in 20 years, most of that time, nagsishepherd siya ng mga tupa. Very monotonous thing na ginagawa nila. Ni David, pupunta doon, papakainin yung ship, ibabalik sa kulungan. For 20, and no king siya, I mean, he was anointed king. He was the next king of Israel. And here's David shepherding those sheep. Why? Because when the time comes, when he had to face Goliath, Ang naririkol lang niya, nung nagsishepherd ako nung sheep, there was a lion, there was a bear, and God has been faithful to me. God has been so faithful to me that during the time na nagsishepherd ako, I can face the giant here today. And my hope and prayer is that you can face your giant because of those waiting periods you're trusting in God. That God has empowered you to rely on Him, not on your own strength and understanding which are limited, but you're relying on Him. We will soar. That's a promise. Just to give you a background about eagles. My favorite course in subject science. Eh. Malita ko, sabi yung teacher ko, our lesson for today is science. Sabi niya, what is science? Taas ako ng kamay. Siya, teacher, teacher. Oh, Jeff, ano yun? What is science? Science is our lesson for today. So, mahilig ako sa science, okay? Ang galing ko, diba? That's the definition of science. Just to give you a big background, did you know, okay, biology tayo. Mahingi mo kayo sa biology, ano? Alam niyo ba, an eagle can, can really amass the speed of 150 miles per hour. With a wingspan of almost seven feet, mas malaki pa sa akin, ha? And they just have to glide. Alam niyo po ba that they just use their, their wings like two minutes per hour? Because they just glide over the surface. They soar to a height of like half and a half miles. And not only that, yung mata niya, I, I mean, biology to 101. The eyes, they're so keen. Ang dami niyo matutunan sa akin ngayon. E meron siyang 270 degrees peripheral vision. Ano yung sabihin nun? Hindi ko rin alam. Basta masarap, masarap ng pakinggan, di ba? 270 degrees peripheral vision. I don't know what that meant, but it's, it's, it's a good for me. That eyes is so keen, it can spot a rabbit two miles away. Wow. That's how powerful this eagle. And when the Bible says, when you're willing to choose me, when you're willing to choose life and blessing, and now you're waiting, you're trusting in me, I have empowered you, you will soar on wings like eagle. And like that man who's on the foot of the mountain and looking at the mountain so big, so, wow, ang laki ng problema ko, you're gonna be like the eagle soaring on high and you will see that mountain so small. You will see that mountain, wow, it seems insignificant at all, the height, because you're on top of the mountain. And God was giving you that perspective that you will see differently. You will see things in a different perspective. You will encounter cancer in a different perspective. You will in- encounter unforgiveness in a different light. Wow. The reason why I can forgive you because I am empowered by the Holy Spirit. I receive the grace of God. And it's new every morning. That on my knees, I'm praying every morning, Lord, give me the grace to forgive. Give me the grace to love that office mate. Give me the grace to love my children in spite of their rebellious heart. Give me the grace to love my spouse. Why? Because in the moment of waiting, I'm strengthening myself by reading the Word of God and obeying Him. There's a promise. You will soar. You will run. God wants you to be blessed vertically because during that time, hindi ka magi stay sa taas. There will be time that you will running and there will be time you'll be walking. 
But because you have a different perspective, it's gonna be a different ball game dito sa baba. Back to reality, it's gonna be a different ball game. Because you knew very well that He will fulfill His promise. Alam niyo po ba, anybody here, tuwan-tuwa kayo because of the traffic light na may timer? Sino natuwa? Di ba? Doong araw, kasi nga, I hate waiting. Pag naka-red yan, hanap ako namang sisingit-singitan, eh, naman, namang gigit-git ako. Hindi pa ako Christian nun. So, <laughs> na Christian ako nun. So, <clears throat> Hindi pa ako pastor nun. <coughs> so, ayan, ano, pagkaantakal naman mag-go, bubusina ka, ang galit na galit ka. Pero pag alam mong may timer, wow, nung na-invento to, okay lang. Pag nandiyan ako sa kanto na McKinley, may timer, 56 seconds, okay lang, ang dahil ko pa pwedeng gawin. Nag-nail cutter ako, nag-toot brush, 56 seconds. Kung baga, kampanti ka. Hindi ka pressured. Ano ba, ang takal mag-go, sisingitan ko itong kolokoy na ito, kanina pa ito, ah. But when the timer says na, wow, malapit na, you can prepare yourself, okay, permera mo, and then go. Why? Because alam mo, you're expected pagdating ng zero niyan, mag-go-go yan. It's the same thing. Do you knew very well that God will deliver His promise? When Joshua said, not one of His good promises fail. Not one of His good promises falls in the ground. Everyone was fulfilled. Let me tell you something, God wants you healed. God wants you restored to that relationship. God wants you to be loved. You're, you're very significant to God. He even sent His Son to die for you. You are loved. You're so secure with the love of God. But you have to see it. And that's where faith kicks in. That's where faith kicks in in the, in the midst of waiting. In this in-between, are you in faith that God wants the best for you? And if it doesn't happen... And in the process, you get close to God, okay na rin. Hindi ka gumaling sa cancer. You're hoping gagaling yung cancer mo. But in the process, nakilala mo si God, namatay ka, okay lang din, nasa langit ka. Hello? Di ba? Napaaga lang. Kesa naman namatay ka, wala ka sa langit. Lugi ka. I don't know, mamatay ka rin eh. Are you listening? It's just a matter of really knowing this God in this in-between. That you will soar on wings like eagle. Is it really possible? Is it even possible to really be consistent, flying, soaring above the circumstances? Yes, it's possible. Because the power available in you, let me just give you, just, kung hindi pa kayo convinced, my hope and prayer is that these last three verses will convince you. Is that power really available for me? Or yung power ba na yung kaya ba talagang labanan tong temptation? Kaya ba labanan tong temptation to, uh, sa office namin, lahat ng illegal meron, pastor, you don't have to do illegal things, lalapit lang sa'yo yung mga under the table, you don't just have to close your eyes. Kaya ko ba labanan yun? 2 Corinthians 12, 9, My grace is sufficient for you. For my power, everybody say, my power. It's God's power is made perfect in your weakness. When you feel weak fighting this temptation, when you feel weak, you cannot wait. Atat na atat kang bilin yun, kahit mabaong ka sa utang. Ah, Lord, give me that grace. And just to give you an idea what that power looks like. Ano ba yung power na yan? Well, just to give you an idea how powerful that power that is available for you to defeat the enemy, let me just give you an idea and we'll close. And in His own incomparably great power in Ephesians 1.19, for us who believe, this is only exclusive for us who accepted Christ. Sabi niya, and His incomparably great power for us who believe, that power, yun siya sabing to say no to ungodliness, that power that is in you, the Holy Spirit in you, that power is like the working of a mighty strength. Okay, pastor, mighty strength given. So ano yung ginawa ng mighty strength na yun? Boom which he exerted in Christ when he raised Christ from the dead. Wow. Wow. That power to forgive those unforgivable person, that power is that same power that God uses exerted to raise Jesus from the dead. Remember that how powerful to raise somebody else from the dead? And how powerful it is to raise a sinless man from the dead. That same power is available for you today. It's available for you. 
That's why you can say no to ungodliness. That's why pag nag-pop up sa screen yung pornographic site, you can say no to that pornographic site. That's why when that unlovable person comes your way, I can love you. You know why? Because the power to love you is not about me. It's about the same power that exerted my Christ on the cross. That's why I can love you. That's why you can forgive your spouse. That's why you can raise your children well in spite of the difficulties in life. That's why you can say no to that under the table because that same power is telling me, I'm your provider. Hindi yung mga illegal na provider mo. That's why I can say no to you. That's why I can say in your face, magbabayad ako ng tamang tax. Because wala akong fear, because I know God is my provider. Because every time we bite into the temptation, it's as if we're telling God, Lord, tulungan lang kita, baka hindi mo ko ma-provide eh. That's what practically you're saying. Lord, papasukin ko lang illegal na to for a moment in time para makaipon ako, para masecure yung... That's what you're telling God, Lord, baka hindi mo kaya eh. Let me just help you, God. That's what you're telling God every time you bite into the temptation. That's what Eve and Adam thought. Ah, yung apple, mas masarap to. O yung tree na, yung fruit na to, mas masarap to kaysa sinasabi ni God. It's when we doubt God that He loses its power. Let's all stand. Let's just pray today. I hope I made sense today. That for those of you who is battling a lot of temptation, now, for those of you who are in this situation today, your present situation seems, ah, para pastor, ang labo na to, hindi na ako makaka-move on. My family is really wrecked. My whole family is wrecked. It's torn apart. Somebody approaches me one time. Her children nasa rehab. And this woman, talaga ang laki ng problema niya. And then I just tell her, you know what? Si God na bahala sa mga ibang problema. Ang problema mo ngayon, how can you have a closer relationship with God? Then, wag mo, wag mo, wag mo isipin yung peripheral issue. It's about you encountering Christ first. And everything will just fall into its proper places. That was a few months ago. That was last year. And I had the privilege to meet his sons. Out of the rehab, nilipat sa ibang rehab na Christian. And now they're worshiping God. And she can't even imagine how this thing is possible. Because kahit anong gawin niya, kahit sabi niya, ititit ko kay US trip ngayon, bumait lang kayo. It cannot, it won't do the trick. It's about you having that encounter with Christ. And people around you will see, I want the power that you have. Let's just bow down our heads. If that's you today, you want to receive that kind of power. You want to be renewed by God. You're in the midst of severe trial today. I don't know, maybe okay naman yung buhay mo, but you just want to be sustained. You just want to keep on running and walking and not fainting. I don't know. We can pray today for that grace to come upon us. For that power to live in us. That same power exerted, that, that God exerted for Christ to rise from the dead. So if that's you, can just raise your hand. Let's just believe God for that power today. I guess most of us are raising our hands. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord God, na hindi mo kami iniwan as orphans. Na hindi mo kami iniwan. Ito yung Bible, bahala na kayo. Learn it and just live it out. No, 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 Lord. You gave us the power. The Holy Spirit. You have given us the Holy Spirit. Will empower us to do your will. So, Father, help us today, those men and women raising their hands today. Lord, hindi ko alam ang mga pinagdadaanan nila ngayon. I have no idea, Lord God, kung ano may present situation nila. But Lord, we have a promise that we want to claim. We want that promise, Lord God, to be fulfilled in our lifetime. And Father, it may not seem possible with our own eyes looking at the situation, but Lord, doon ka pumapasok sa impossibilities. That in betweens, We'll just choose to wait. And while waiting, you're strengthening us, doing your will, obeying your word. Keep pursuing you and knowing you in the process. Not focusing on the blessing, but the blesser. Not focusing on the gift, but the giver. Not focusing on the healing, but the healer, Lord God. We want to know you more, Lord. That's it, Lord God. We just want to get to know you in a deeper, more personal way. So, Father, help us, each and every one of us here today. Strengthen us. Lord, lalabas kami sa kwarto na to, Lord God, with the same problems, with the same debt, 
with the same circumstances but with different power today that we'll be clothed with different power today that we will have a different perspective we're going to soar on wings like eagle and we will see beyond the circumstances we will rise above the challenges and use those challenges to rise so Father, help us today. I know this is a good teaching, but apart from applying it, it's no good. It's just a good teaching. It's just information. But Lord, what we want is revelation. That when we go out of this room, that revelation will be transformed into action. That right now, after this, we will text those people whom we can't forgive. That after this, we will text those people whom we can't love. That after this, we'll go to our parents and just honor them. That after this, we'll just go to our children and love them unconditionally, without any favoritism. That after this, we're going to make it right in pursuing a wealth. That after this, men listening here today, that we have two distinct roles, and that's to be a father to our children and a husband to our wives. And that is non-negotiable. That anything else is replaceable. And Lord, for those men and for those women listening here today, help them to grasp how much you love them. They don't have to really rely on, on stuff to be fulfilled, to be secured, to be significant in man's eyes because you alone have loved them first. And that's enough. So Father, help us today as we continue our lives. We want those kind of eagle, Lord God, that's soaring. And we're going to run and not grow weary and walk and not be faint because we choose to wait. In the name of Jesus, amen.